When I say meditation, again, I want to qualify by explaining because people have a lot of concept of meditation. Because meditation is sometimes like sitting, lighting, saying Om, or learning, burning incense, saying mantras. I mean, that is, of course, a form of meditation. But meditation is much more than that. Much more than that. Ultimately, meditation is a skillful means you know, is to really bring about, basically, because as a mind is distracted, distraction is the root cause of all our problem, is that through the mindfulness to bring our mind home, to create mindfulness and awareness, and to kind of unclothe or peel away all the barriers and the, how do you say, obstructions, you know? and slowly reveal, uh, find a true nature and a true heart or a fundamental nature as well as also the compassion and wisdom. That's what meditation is and ultimately leading to the, the inherent realization of the nature mind. For example, when you speak from the highest point of view, like from the point of view of like the, some of you may have heard of the teaching called the Mahamudra, the Dzogchen, which are the highest teachings in the Tibetan tradition. Um, that when you talk of meditation in that, in that, in that respect, or according to that, it is often meant by meditation means abiding by the recognition of our true nature. Yeah. So, um, reason why. Um, so therefore, what I am saying when I say from meditative or from the yogi or the from experiential is to is is because also, you know, Western people are very, pra- you're really practically seeking. I don't know whether you're practical or not. You know, sometimes trying to be too practical is very unpractical. But at least we are very trying to be very practical. How can we relate? How can we do it? You know, how can we just be there? You know, you know out there. You, know? <laughs> you understand? Very much, just, you know, particularly very much kind of a goal oriented <laughs> yeah, very much and it's sometimes it's just really out there <laughs> and that's why sometimes we miss it because actually it's not out there it's actually here that we have to slowly realize and find and we have to disarm our own negativity our own aggression and there's a way in extraordinarily sometimes, in, in just on one, one moment, we are so many people at the same time. In one moment, we are all this aggressive, sometimes even negative, you know, we can be. But in another breath, we can be this actually very wonderful person. Because we have this, you can say, the light and the shadow. The point of the spiritual path is to really, to teach you what to abandon and what to adopt. To abandon the negative aspect of ourselves to adopt the more positive, the wholesome aspect of your being. And which is a choice, anyway, it's a choice. So therefore we have to be educated, we have to become aware. To be aware. Because sometimes, you see, we don't know how to make the choice, because we do not have the wisdom of discernment. So we cannot discern because we do not have that wisdom. And also that wisdom is something we have to, through the teachings, to cultivate in ourselves, so that we come to discern for ourselves. And not someone to tell us what to do or what not to do, but for ourselves to discover. Is that clear? And so, if you were to begin very simply, I think the one of the most important point for all of us is to become real, you know, to become real, to become authentic, to become genuine. So the whole thing is to strip away all that is unnatural. I call it the natural striptease. <laughs> the striptease. Strip away. Free away. Strip away. You know, so that we become free of ourselves, because there's so much, isn't it? So much stories, 
cinema. So much. That's why there's no peace. So much pressure and also so much speed. And we need to kind of slow down. Slow down doesn't become you become extremely slow. <laughs> you understand? It's rather when you are very spacious. Sometimes we can become extremely, we can become very efficient. We can accomplish a lot in a very short span of time. Because sometimes you notice that our life is filled with activities and doing many things. As you know, really, sometimes so many things we do, when you really question, what is it for? What does it really bring to you ultimately? You know, sometimes we just do, you know, we just do, we just activity, just activity. You know, like sometimes maybe you be in your stuck in your own home on a holiday. Just go around the house will take the whole day, isn't it? There's still there's plenty to do, more mess. You come there, you make if suppose there was no you <laughs> No house, no mess. But as soon as you come into a clean house, you make a mess, <laughs> which you have to clean. You know, so it becomes a vicious circle in a, in a funny way, isn't it? Like, you know, and really you just go around. And seemingly you do so many things, you just, just go by and you just find, say, what have I accomplished? You know? I think sometimes we have to question that. Not that... I mean, there are things that we have to do that's unavoidable, but sometimes we just, we just simply just get carried away, or, but, you know, mindlessly. I think we need to simplify also and really ask ourselves what is really most important. That's why, you know, facing death, coming to terms with the death, help us to sort out our priorities because we realize that we, that we could die any day anyway, you know, to, we know that we're going to die one day, but we do not know when we're going to die. And um, we can never say when we're going to die, you know, it's, it's, it's completely unpredictable. In fact, to die is very simple, as I always say. You breathe out and you can't breathe in, it's called death. <laughs> See? So that's one of the reasons why, you know, when you come to face death is, is to come to face life. Face yourself and to really come to sort out priorities, to see whether you really have a life. You understand? On one hand, we can be so many things and busy, confused, but the next moment, if you know how to kind of stop, take a break, or come home, just quietly. You understand? Just quietly. Very simply. It's incredible. Something settles. It's purified and freed. Do you understand? Very... Sometimes it's as simple as that. But basically it's like for us to just to sit, just to be. To be with ourselves. Do you understand? Just to be. Just to be. Like, for example, here, as I come and, you know, sit in front of you, just like this. Is it just sit like that? You think just naturally dissolve. Do you understand? It just melt away. Your kind of ordinary mind, ordinary concerns just kind of dissolve. And there's a sense of transcendence also. And sense of peace.